Dress codes reveal our social aspirations and even political ideals. If we care enough about clothing to pass a rule or a regulation around it, we're trying to accomplish something particular. And the dress code can actually get us to understand what it is that clothing signifies, what it is that the person writing the dress code is trying to control, promote, or repress. Sometimes dress codes make sense because a dress code in one sense is just a way that a group or an institution uses the power of attire and fashion, that expressive power, for collective ends. You think about, for instance, the racial justice movement, the civil rights movement in the 1950s and 1960s, when civil rights activists went to protest at lunch counters or to conduct public marches in that early period of the civil rights movement, there was a dress code. People were expected to wear their Sunday best, and that dress code allow that movement to make a public statement that was very powerful. On the other hand, there are lots of reasons to be worried about dress codes. Dress codes have been used to entrench status hierarchies of various kinds by imposing a narrow and prescriptive view of what particular types of people ought to be like through requiring them to wear certain types of clothing. The easiest case to see this uh, involves gender. Gender dress codes very often are based on antiquated and inappropriate ideas about women's appropriate role. High yield shoes are a consistent source of conflict. What's fascinating and surprised me in my research was that the high yield shoe didn't start off as a feminine style at all. It actually started off as a masculine and military style. It was brought to Europe by Persian horse riders and the heel of the shoe was designed to fit in a stirrup. The style caught on and over time it became a high status. And so the heels got higher and higher kind of to exaggerate that. And Louis XIV had shoes with red high heels and he actually passed a law forbidding anyone outside of his royal court from wearing shoes with red soles. For a long time in history, and even today, women would mimic parts of masculine style. And they were expressing or asserting their right to um, enjoy masculine prerogatives, whether it was masculine freedoms, masculine assertion, even kind of adopted by women on the avant-garde. So some women started to wear high heel shoes. And over time, but slowly, they became more associated with women. One key moment in that evolution involved that period in history in which men began to get rid of opulent attire in favor of streamlined and practical attire. So as that happened, what was once a status symbol started to become questionable and suspect and eventually associated with femininity and then in a distinctive kind of misogynistic mindset becoming therefore associated with frivolousness and treated with contempt. One big area where I'm fairly confident we're going to see changes in dress codes is around norms of gender. I mean, we're already seeing such dramatic changes in terms of the recognition of the transgender community and people who are gender non-binary. And that's a remarkable challenge to a centuries old set of conventions in which men's and women's clothing diverged and were considered to be symbolic opposites. You know, another interesting area post-pandemic is what happens to the norms of workplace attire. You know, in the era of the Zoom call, where first you had the idea of like the Zoom shirt that people would just kind of leave hanging out of the back of their chair, and then they could stick it on right before the meeting, and presumably for the rest of the day they're wearing sweatpants or, or pajamas. Interestingly, another thing that developed was a kind of subtle new dress code, but that involved not the clothing itself, but what was behind you in the room. So then you got norms about how one should style the background of their Zoom call in order to communicate messages. And that was very much like a different kind of a dress code. So now you've got a whole other category of things that before strangers never saw the inside of your house that have now become the subject of the same kind of scrutiny that we used to apply to dress.